What's going on friends? It is time for the great carburetor debate. Do you keep your constant velocity, your factory CV carburetor, or do you swap it out for a mechanical smoothbore flat slide like the Makuni HSR? Harley Davidson has had quite a history with carburetors over the years and all the different makes and models that they used. Now even as legend has it, William Harley and Arthur Davidson, their very first prototype, they modified a tomato soup can to make a carburetor out of it on that very first prototype bike. Now since then, as I mentioned, Harley Davidson has used many different brands and many different styles of carburetors over the years. From the likes of Schebler, Linker, Talotson, Zenith, Bendix, and finally Kian. But now a lot of those carburetors are going way back down the rabbit hole of Harley carburetor history. So today we just want to focus on the Kian Constant Velocity CV carb that appeared on the Harley Davidson in 1988 with the Sportster and then made it into the Big Twins in 1990. Now guys, I know there's a lot of strong opinions out there on whether you should ditch your CV carburetor and go with the Makuni or the Makuni carburetor's junk, stay with the Constant Velocity. So I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on this in the comments. But please don't forget to help the video out if you enjoy it by dropping a like on it and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. The CV carburetor became very popular for its ability to atomize fuel a lot more efficiently than the old butterfly style carburetors. But with the constant velocity carburetor, it leaves you as the rider indirectly controlling the flow of air through the carburetor. The slide on your constant velocity carburetor is actually pneumatically operated and not mechanically operated hence leaving you indirectly operating the airflow. By using the throttle cable to operate a butterfly valve in the throat of the carburetor rather than actually operating the slide itself. The slide itself is actually sealed by a diaphragm and held closed by a very weak spring. Now this very weak spring allows the slide to open and close relative to engine vacuum. So you as the rider are really indirectly controlling the airflow through the carburetor. It's actually, you're controlling the butterfly valve inside the carburetor, and then the engine vacuum is open and closing the slide as you open that butterfly valve. Now, as you can imagine, this does cause a slight bit of a delay in throttle response. And a lot of guys, you will note that with CV carburetors, if you've ever jumped on a bike with a Makuni, how instant the throttle responds. But, this little slight delay in throttle response, the EPA loves this because when you get on the gas and you start dumping fuel into that motor, this prevents those very high rich fuel spikes which cause basically unburnt fuel going in to the engine and coming out as black smoke out of the exhaust system. EPA doesn't want that, so they love this little slight delay with the constant velocity carburetor. But the CV carbs do have accelerator pumps, so you may not even feel that delay. Now the other thing that the CV carburetor is very well known for is good fuel economy. So you're getting good fuel economy, less pollution, EPA's happy, you as a rider you've got the accelerator pump, so you're really not even noticing the delay, everybody's happy, right? Now CV carburetors, when they are set up properly, they do perform very well with just pipes and an air cleaner. The issue is, is that most CV carbs they're set up incorrectly and they get jetted way too rich. With a CV carburetor, a 45 slow jet, a 190 main jet, and a little idle air mixture screw tweaking, you can get these set up and they'll run very well when you add an aftermarket exhaust and air cleaner. Now the mistake usually made with the CV carburetor is immediately jumping to a dyno jet like jet kit or a thunder slide kit when all you've got is pipes and an air cleaner and this causes way over fueling. A dyno jet kit or a thunder slide kit really isn't necessary unless you're going with a big bore kit, cams, high compression pistons, and doing some head work. Yes, at that point, one of those kits is very, very necessary. Now just bear in mind that the compression ratio, the displacement, the cams, the heads, this determines the signal that the carburetor sees. The CV carburetor is very forgiving because of the slide. They basically act like a vacuum secondary on cars. When the motor demands more air, the vacuum secondary opens and lifts the needles. So a carburetor being air density sensitive really isn't a bad thing at all. CV carburetors work very well with stock to lightly modified engines, but a CV carburetor can be modified to work with some heavy duty engine work. Now this is where the debate really comes in. Do you take the time to modify your CV carburetor 
Or do you just ditch it in favor of an out-of-the-box, ready-to-bolt-on and run Makuni HSR car? The Makuni HSR smoothbore carburetors really do have a lot of advantages over the CV carburetor. One is being less moving parts and no diaphragm to worry about. Rather than the carburetor relying on engine vacuum to operate the slide, you operate the slide directly with the throttle. With you as the rider operating the slide directly, this eliminates that little delay in throttle response caused by waiting for the slide to be operated by the vacuum from the engine. This is going to give you pretty much basically instantaneous throttle response. A major misconception about the Makuni carburetor is that if you swap out your CV for a Makuni, you're going to lose all of your fuel economy. Now, this really just isn't true. A properly tuned Makuni carburetor will maintain your fuel economy, if not gain you some economy going down the road. Just like a CV carburetor, if it's improperly tuned, it can really cost you fuel economy. So really the moral of the story is, depending on whichever carburetor you choose, you've got to get it tuned right or you're going to lose power, you're going to lose fuel economy, and you're going to go backwards from where you want to be. Even with a CV or a Makuni carburetor, you can really control your fuel economy just based on your riding habits. But I know, I get it. you got a Makuni carburetor on there, you've got your motor hopped up a little bit, you got that instant throttle response, it can be pretty hard to stay out of the throttle. Ask me how I know. The Makuni carburetors are generally pretty close right out of the box. You can almost bolt these on and go in most cases. But if you do have to make some minor adjustments to your new Makuni carburetor, they're a lot easier to set up and work on than a CV carburetor. Now Makuni does have a very comprehensive tuning guide, which is very handy if you're trying to get it set up to match your setup. I believe they still include these in the boxes, but as we're doing away with paper these days, you could definitely find it online. Now, one of my favorite features about the HSR carbs is the accessibility of the main jet. You have a plug in the bottom of the float bolt. You pull that plug and the main jet is right there. It is super easy to change. Now, this feature of the Makuni carburetor not only saves you time, but it can save you money. It could save you money by if your bike, you take your bike to a dyno tuner and he's having to do some fueling adjustments to it, all he's got to do is pull that plug, swap that main jet out, put the plug back in, and you're ready to go. This is very helpful if your bike's sitting on a dyno and your wallet is on the clock. On a CV carburetor, you might be looking at a 20 minute job to get the carburetor pulled off or at least into a position where you can get the float bowl off, change the jet, put the float bowl on, get it back on the bike, and then do another run on the dyno. That's gonna add up if he's having to take that time. Now, while you can modify the factory CV carburetor, there might come a point where you might just feel like it's easier just to get a Makuni carburetor and replace your CV carb. Because after you get your CV carb modified, then you got to get that thing tuned properly to your setup. Is where, once again, the Makuni comes out of the box pretty much ready to go. Now don't get me wrong, there's really nothing wrong with the CV carburetor. They've been around a long time and they do work very well. In my opinion, the CV carb is more emissions oriented, is not so much performance oriented. And also that you do have the extra working parts with the springs and the diaphragm, the butterfly valve. These are a lot of things you don't have to deal with with the Makuni cars, which are a bit more performance oriented. Not only that, the Makuni is just pretty straightforward and easy to tune. Right out of the box, bolting on a Makuni carburetor, you can actually see some decent horsepower gains. And not to mention that instantaneous throttle response. But I want you guys' opinion. Which carburetor setup do you prefer? Which one do you like better and why? But either which way you go, it really comes down to a matter of how much time and money do you want to put into it? Going with the Makuni carburetor is going to be more expensive, but it's right out of the box. It bolts on. It's damn near ready to go. The CV carburetor route is cheaper since, well, A, you already have it, chances are. And you're just really putting time in it to modify it and get it set up and tuned properly. But anyhow, guys, that is all I've got for you this week. Please don't forget to drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And please, don't forget, keep leaving those video suggestions. Some of them are pretty interesting. But anyhow, guys, until next week, please dodge those cards, ride smart, ride safe, and I'll see you right back here in next week's video. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.